tell you the truth that today has been extremely interesting in so, so many ways. The one thing I want to do is I want to share with you the fact that I did watch The Matrix. I know I've said it before on the videos that I've done today that I watched The Matrix, even said it yesterday. The Matrix, there is a lot more to it than what appears and a lot of people are saying it was not all that great at first i said the same thing until i watched a particular video letting us know about all of the things that was in the matrix that we perhaps uh oh sorry there is a line on my screen that shouldn't be and now i gotta adjust that line so give me a second to adjust the line it's a thin line between, uh-oh, it won't let me do it. Okay, it's the line for the screen because I just made the actual rectangle larger and I opened up the wrong one. I wasn't supposed to open up this uploading this video, Banking While Black. That video took 50 minutes to do, even though it was referencing a 10 minute video because of all the nuances that took place so as my boy uh brian adams would say please forgive me all right ladies and gentlemen this is the video i'm gonna advise all of you to watch if you've seen the matrix or even if you haven't seen the matrix this right here will give you a whole different perspective on the matrix resurrection this particular video by screen crush this individual the matrix resurrection end ding explain ending explain plus easter eggs and full breakdown what it all means that's the full title but if you look up the matrix resurrections with an s colon ending explained then you'll be able to pull up this video this is the young lady responsible for the movie Kowski is saying that Warner Brothers and all the movie studios are the root of all evil. And then we finally meet the analyst and notice that he's wearing blue eyeglasses to match the blue choice people make to stay here. Now in the shots in his office, Neo is framed with a maze behind him on the wallpaper to show that he is now traveling through this new matrix trying to find his way out. The analyst cat is named Deja Vu, and it gives him the power to rewind and remake events. Just like how a movie studio is able to turn back the clock and give us another Star Wars, another Spider-Man, a Matrix, etc. In the original Matrix, a Deja Vu was explained like this. Deja Vu is usually a glitch in the Matrix. It happens when they change something. But this world is built on Deja Vu. It's built on repetition. Now, we're going to stop right there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to explain the Matrix from the beginning. Everybody saw this, but they ignored it because it was the most obvious. We are living in a matrix. We're not living in a simulated world. It's not simulated, but it is a world nonetheless. I wish that I had the watchtower on here. Then I could take you to the actual scripture in the book of Romans, where it describes as to why he allowed this to exist. Now, The Matrix, when it was first came out, you had Neil, the one played by Keanu Reeves, and Neil was known as The One. He kept saying he wasn't The One. Now, you remember how Jesus never denied that he was the Christ. When they asked him if he was the Christ, he would not answer directly, not until after he was getting ready to be put to death. Did he say things like, you yourself are saying that I am the Christ, and for this reason I have been born, and for this reason I've come into the world? Okay? It wasn't until afterwards that he started announcing that he was, just like with Neil. It wasn't until afterwards that he started accepting the fact that he was the one. So please understand there is a correlation between the matrix and reality or scripture. Neil is supposed to be Jesus. And you notice it's called resurrection. It isn't called resurrection because they decided to resurrect Neil. Lord have mercy, people. Pay attention. Sorry. Neil and Smith 
Remember, Smith is the opposite of Neil. Okay? The Bible refers to Satan as the anointed cherub. Book of Ezekiel. It says that in the Garden of Eden is where he was stationed. He was the guardian angel. He is a cherub. Cherubs are guardian angels. They were to guard. That's why you see the two angels with the sword blocking the entryway back to the Garden of Eden were cherubs. Cherubs are your protectors. Well, Satan was the anointed protector. He was the chief protector. He was the third one. You had Jehovah, Jesus, Satan. So in this, technically, Jehovah was supposed to be portrayed as the architect. And the so-called uh, oracle was supposed to be Mother Nature. <laughs> Buddy! Anyway, getting back to the Matrix and having this be the reality and Neil supposed to be Jesus and Satan supposed to be Mr. Smith, this time they decided to have the machine world. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you how this is a simulation, a world that was created for you to make you feel comfortable, to make you feel like everything you were doing was your reality. That, oh, especially this new algorithm that all these computer systems have, where if I'm looking, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot find anything interesting anymore because I click on one video and all of a sudden they will show me nothing but videos regarding that one thing I clicked on, thinking that I'm interested in that. Ladies and gentlemen, I will click on something because for that moment I'm interested in that point, but that's not my interest 24 hours a day. I keep trying to tell people, you cannot figure me out because it's not, I don't operate that way. And this algorithm, I will do everything in my power to make sure this algorithm will never figure me out. But the algorithm has figured most of you out. So in this movie, this is what they're doing. They're showing how everybody realizes that something is going wrong in our world. That things are not adding up. And everybody's complacent. We know that even if there isn't global warming, there is a problem with the environment. And it's not no 100 million year problem. It is a problem. We know it because man has been tampering with our environment, with the harp system and other weather systems that they have, that they use as warfare. Warfare people, how in the world do they use weapons such as that in warfare because they can cause droughts they can cause weather systems to shift that's why you're finding these massive massive storms massive floodings in all of these places that are not used to it then you have this jet stream thing that's going on right now in america and this is not normal everybody will tell you it's not normal well ladies and gentlemen Mr. Smith created the current world that we're living in. That's why Jesus referred to him as the ruler of this world. This world is after his design. Then the book of John, 1 John, tells us the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. If you don't think the matrix is designed after what's in scripture, something is wrong with you. Even to the point of Neil and Trinity needing to come together for this new Matrix to work out and how they're going to get to create something new. When you saw the last Matrix revolution, now remember, for a thousand years, this one was only for 60 years, but for a thousand years, Satan is supposed to be locked away. And then all of those who have died, given an opportunity to live in a whole new world. It's a whole new world. Okay. Well, this is what resurrection is. The Bible talks about a resurrection after Satan is locked up. Well, Mr. Smith was locked up. Was nowhere to be found. Go and take a look at the movie. Mr. Smith is nowhere to be found. He's incarnated, technically, in the boss that works with Neil as they have created a matrix of their own. So it's a matrix within a matrix. Isn't that interesting? 
Well, this gentleman, not only does he explain, listen to him. Nostalgia and the familiar occurring over and over and over. Later on, there's a montage where the creatives say the same thing every day. What made Matrix different? It effed with your head. What made Matrix different? It effed with your head. This is saying that there are no new ideas in movie studios anymore. Everything is just repeated from the day before. The montage also shows Thomas getting on a blue hued treadmill, a way to show that he is running in place every day. And the song that plays in this montage is White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane, a song that is about drugs and Alice in Wonderland. And of course, there was a lot of Alice symbolism in the original Matrix. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice. There's also the white rabbit and passing through the looking glass, both of which are repeated in this movie. Bugs even has a rabbit tattoo and says that her name is Bugs, like the bunny, which is also owned by Warner Brothers. Sati even gives Trinity a copy of Alice in Wonderland later in the movie. Thomas Anderson tells the analyst that he's either crazy or in a simulation, and the analyst replies, that's not a good choice either way. And this is actually what the analyst does best. He makes people think they don't have a choice, that this is the only way. You can only choose safety or insanity, but either way, keep scrolling. And I don't have to explain what the blue and red pills mean, right? Blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. And there are actually two coffee shops in the movie, which I think is significant. One is Simulate. Talk about the coffee shops in a second. Simulate, simulation. Simulate, simulation. That's the name of the rest, the coffee shop. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I stopped it only for a brief moment because we're talking about the two pills, reality and fantasy. People, you've all been living the same reality and fantasy choice your entire lives. You can choose to serve Jehovah his way, or you can choose to not serve Jehovah his way. That's been the choice from day one. It is a simple choice. People call it free will. I've always said if it was free will, then there wouldn't be a penalty Everybody could choose what they wanted, just like Eve. Eve did not have free will, because if it was free, she could eat from that particular tree. Remember, it wasn't an apple, people. There was only one tree like it. There are many varieties of apples. But this particular fruit, there was only one tree like it. No other tree in the garden was like the tree of the knowledge of good and bad. So stop thinking it's one of the fruits that's on the earth today. They blocked access to that tree and to the tree of life. Tree of knowledge of good and bad and the tree of life don't exist anymore. So stop thinking it does. Plus the garden was destroyed when the flood happened. Oh my God. Let's get back to this conversation. There are two choices. You can choose to serve Jehovah, the God of the Bible, or you can choose not to serve him. Either way, you have to choose. I know people are saying, well, that's not, I don't have to choose. Isn't that what he just said that the architect, not the architect, this is the, uh, what is he? Uh, he's not the architect, he's something else. <sighs> Dang it. In this movie, Bugs even has a rabbit tattoo and says that her name is Bugs, like the bunny, which is also owned by Warner Brothers. Sati even gives Trinity a copy of Alice in Wonderland later in the movie. Thomas Anderson tells the analyst that he's either crazy or in a simulation. And he he's either crazy or in a simulation. And he says neither one of those is any good choice whatsoever. I understand, but he's the analyst. The analyst. See, and the way they did it this time is to make it appear that the one who is supposed to portray Satan is not in control of the world. That there's somebody else pulling the string. Someone else like the Illuminati or the Wild Beast, otherwise known as the United Nations. When it is Satan who's orchestrating everything to begin with. Ain't that a shame? Let's play. And the analyst replies, that's not a good choice either way. And this is actually what the analyst does best. He makes people think they don't have a choice, that this is the only way. You can only choose safety or insanity. But he Hold on. He makes people think they don't have a choice. You can only choose safety or an ins insanity. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the world. It makes you believe that you don't have a choice. And 
But didn't you just say we don't have a choice? No, you do have a choice. You can either choose to serve Jehovah or choose not to serve him. One way or the other. But it is a choice. You will get to make that choice. But again, with the choice, there's a consequence. See, I, I have it like this. If Jehovah exists, hey, yay, I'm in the right place. If he doesn't exist, yay, yay, I'm in the right place. Why? Because I put my faith where the truth is. See, I understand the world. I understand the world is a facade. The world is not real. I've been telling you all for years that there is no such thing as money. In our current world, money does not exist. There is no money. It's only credit. You've been hearing me yell and scream that. But everybody believes in that imaginary thing known as cash. You know, I actually asked the court that. I said, wait a minute, you said I must pay in cash. What the, is cash? Can you please define what cash is and where can I find that in the Constitution? Because I'd like to know. I know what money is, but I need to know what cash is because I ain't never seen a definition for cash. I need to go cash this check. Excuse me? Oh, it's called a check cashing. Cashing? How can you cash a check? If you have to pay in cash, how can you cash a check? It ain't never made any sense to me, ladies and gentlemen, ever. Like I said, if it doesn't make logic, it doesn't make sense. And most of the junk out there doesn't make any sense. Most of the junk out there doesn't make any sense. You can tell they're lying because that's what they do. Excuse me. I have a dog that is whining. She usually whines when she has to go, but I've already taken her out in the rain. Lord have mercy. And she took care of her business in the rain. And I promise you, I my jacket was light brown when I went out there. Now my jacket is almost looking like it's black because it's got that much water on it. Because it has been raining for the last three hours. Nonstop. The storm that they said was coming. Now, the part of California I'm in, I'm not in Southern California, so it may not rain in Southern California. Well, it's raining this weekend, but it rains here. And when it does, uh, there is water around me. I couldn't leave my house tonight even if I wanted to. Okay, the only way I could leave my house is if I put snow chains on the car. That's literally the only way I'm driving out of here because it is too much mud, too much mud, too much mud. So basically, I've been here since it started raining. I don't really need to go anywhere. Well, technically, I went to the doctor on Friday. I had them bring a van out and take me. But, oh well, let's get back to the analogy of the matrix and reality. Ladies and gentlemen, like you said about movies, what you don't realize is you're seeing the same old stuff over and over again. People have even heard me say that there's nothing new. Every cop story, there's always the same thing. A cop story. Uh, you have one detective or one police officer is the straight officer. The other one's the non-straight officer. One is the serious officer. One's not the serious officer. One always is married. The other one is always single. They always have a relationship on the job with somebody. Somebody's always breaking up with somebody. Then somebody's in critical condition. Somebody dies. Somebody else comes on. They have a hard time dealing with that somebody. And then it's over. Then they have a new cop story, cop show, and they do the same thing all over again. This is what we go through. This is our world. This is what they do. Ladies and gentlemen, this happens all the time. Not just with police stories, romance stories. Every Christmas so-called story that's ever come on, and I'm glad I haven't seen a single Christmas story this year. 
As a matter of fact, I only heard jingle anything the other day when I went into the store to get me some shrimp. Other than that, I haven't even had an opportunity to listen to no jingle nothing. I am so grateful for that. Get tired of hearing that junk every single year. Those of you who are stuck into your jingle bells and all of that jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock and all that stupid stuff, please understand that music was created to cause you to spend money. To go out there, spend, spend, spend. It's a commercial jingle and you never realized it. You were, you did it when you were younger. You went and you shopped during that time and the music was playing. And so every time that music starts playing, you have the urge to go see what's on sale. Ladies and gentlemen, I know the, the news tomorrow is going to talk about the Christmas so-called sales and how down they were this year, how down they were over last year and the previous years and how it was dismal. And then the after sales, you're going to find ain't going to be too many of them. Ain't too many bargains out there. Why? Because it's by design. Ladies and gentlemen, their design was to break you. Their design was to break you. Now, I wish some of you would really see the Matrix and pay attention because let me explain what the Matrix did for you. And you're going to really appreciate this. The Matrix said that they are looking for your anger. They're looking for you to be upset. They're looking for you to be mad. Why? Because they can work on that energy. The more upset, the more mad you are, the more you will jump after the solution that they put in front of you. That's what the Matrix is telling you. Hold on, let me let them explain. Either way, keep scrolling. And I don't have to explain what the blue and red pills mean, right? Blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. And there are actually two coffee shops in the movie which I think is significant. One is Simulate. This is very clean, Starbucks looking, it's a corporate space. This is where the analyst headquarters himself later in the movie. This is a place of control and uniformity. The other is where Sati works, which is smaller, more independent, a little more quirky. There's graffiti there that says it's easier to buy reality than to live. Ladies and gentlemen, it is so much simpler to buy reality than it is to dispose of dreams. It is so much simpler to buy reality. How do you buy reality? It's all about reality and not about reality. Okay. You must learn. It's all about psychology and not about reality. How do you buy reality but it says it's very difficult to dispose of a dream ladies and gentlemen once you sell the world on believing that something is real when it is not that that junk is actually money you can't get rid of it because everybody and their grandmama gonna rely on it you want to make everybody believe that 9 11 was an actual terrorist attack on america from somebody from Pakistan, go right ahead. Because all they did was fed everybody a dream. They fed people their own reality. Okay? I said by reality, bury reality, excuse me. Because that's what I was going to say next without even looking at that word. Ladies and gentlemen, so much simpler to bury reality than it is to dispose of dreams. All they have to do is keep telling you the lie over and over and over. Whatever the lie is, they just keep telling it to you over and over and over again. Eventually, you will believe the lie over the truth. For instance, that God is a trinity. None of, nobody's ever been able to explain that. They just believe it. Why? Because somebody told them to believe that. Or that evolution is real when it comes to humans. They still to this day cannot find a so-called missing link. That thing that links man to animals. You know, they found all kind of fossils, but ain't never found that fossil. But people still believe. 
or the very thing that people think that they can become rich by playing the lottery. <sighs> shame, shame, shame. One more live your dreams. Again, connecting money to this false reality analyst has built and also can Hold on. Now he said connecting money. I just said the same thing because the name of the movie that was playing is The Root of All Evil. And thus he attributed that. Now it's not the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money is the root. Of, the love of money. Love People loving that junk because they're loving a fantasy. They're loving something that doesn't exist. Connecting the idea of real life, of living, to dreaming of something bigger, a world beyond. During his blue montage, Neo eats a steak, much like Cypher did when he sold his soul to the machines. I know that when I put it in my mouth, the Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious. We also see him in this elevator, again, with a looking glass ceiling, showing that he is looking at a reflection of the real world, just as his game is a reflection of the actual reality outside the Matrix. Everyone on the elevator is on their phones, except for him. Now this really hits home the driving theme of the movie. The first films were about our mutual reliance with machines. They need us, we need them. Sometimes I think about all those people still plugged into the Matrix. And when... Pay attention to what he just said. Sometimes I think about all of those people still plugged into the matrix. I Go ahead and tell me. I can't help thinking that in a way we are plugged into them. Each side of the war used the other to survive. But now social media has kind of become our own little personal matrix. Ladies and gentlemen, what he points out is that everybody has a cell phone. Everybody's looking at their cell phone. Everybody's tied into their cell phone. How many people do you see looking down at their cell phone when you walk during the day? They are not interchangeable. I need y'all to do me a favor. I need to go check something. So I'm not going to put y'all on pause. I'm going to walk over here and see. Inside. Go on. Inside. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. The games that uh, I have to play here, uh, what she does is she whines. And I let her whine outside all day yesterday. But I just had her go in her home. Go home, both of you. Home. Sorry. Yes, I have to because they hear me talking and it is later than what I'm normally up and I'm not going outside anymore. You see, she took me outside and I got more wet with her because that's when it was really storming. It just stopped raining just now. Yep, it stopped raining. But she took me outside and I took her, went out there with her. I'm not doing that again. And so if they have an accident tonight, I'll clean that junk up, but I'm not going outside no more. I just took her outside less than two hours ago, probably an hour ago, and just took him outside less than 30 minutes ago. So hey, we ain't playing that game. I know you people who got kids, y'all go through this all the time. Well, let's get back to Neil. And yes, that's how, that's my interactions with them when they don't listen. So they're back in their room. She was sitting at the door, looking at me, whining. When, oh, I'm sorry. As I said on the video that I had to redo, what she'll do is if she really had to go, what she would do is she would actually come out without me telling her to come out. She'd come all the way over and she will sniff my hand. That's her routine now. The boy, he will come over and he will start jumping up and down and he'll come all the way over to me and hit me. And then he'll pull away and he'll come back and hit me again. That's his way of telling me he has to go. Yeah, I know. It's, <sighs> I don't know. That's just their routine. That's how they let me know when they got to leave and go outside. You know, I am not going to get a trap door to have them coming in and out. Ain't going to do that. No, 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 no. All right. Let's get back to this, the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen, so that you guys can get a better understanding of our reality. 
what's happening, ladies and gentlemen, is that there's a lot of correlation to reality in this movie. And when he talks about reflections and mirrors. Tricks that we've created for ourselves. Social media has an algorithm designed to keep you scrolling endlessly. This algorithm understands the human brain and how we think, just like the analyst. And to keep us engaged, social media knows how to make us feel like we're missing out on something or knows how to piss us off. And the algorithm just feeds on this engagement. Quietly yearning for what you don't have while dreading losing what you do. So the analyst knows how the human brain works, which is also why he's a psychologist, someone who is trained to understand how humans think. When Neo and Trinity meet, she talks about having kids. I remember wanting a family, but was that because that's what women are supposed to want? How do you know if you want something yourself or if your upbringing programmed you to want it? Again, going back to the theme of control, free will or determinism. In Neo's office, he gets a text message from Morpheus telling him how to escape mirroring the phone call from the first film. And when it all goes sideways, the falling water from the sprinkler symbolizes that he's starting to see the code of the Matrix. And when Morpheus finally sees Neo, his first words are the same that he speaks in the original film. At last. Now it is interesting that the Neo in the Matrix is being controlled by his creation, the video game The Matrix. I wonder if Lana Wachowski ever felt this way, like her career was being controlled by the popularity of those movies. When Bugs finally meets Neo, the door they walk through mirrors the door of the Source in Matrix Reloaded, where he learned the truth of what the Matrix is. Morpheus and the others bring Neo to a theater where they have recreated the set from the original rescue scene in The Matrix, and the original Matrix scene plays behind him. This is footage from your game. So we have a fiction, the actual movie we're watching, showing us a fiction, the movie from 1999, and the movie that we're currently watching, Major Directions, is showing us a fiction, the game that Neo built inside the movie, which is showing in front of another fiction, the stage set. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, before I let him say what he's gonna say, did you just hear what he just said? They showed at least six fictions within one. So you have a fiction of 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 a fiction. Interesting, ain't it? That's what this movie did. And a lot of people didn't get this about this movie, about what it was really doing. Ladies and gentlemen, they didn't wait this long just to be waiting this long. They waited this long for a reason. And I'll give them credit for that. I think it was perfect timing. Hey, George. Yeah. What? Huh? I want to know if you're happy. Now, while this seems like a lot of lies and fiction piled on top of each other, what really matters here, what's real, is how it makes you feel. It's the emotional connection that all these fictions make for us in our own lives. What validates and makes your fictions real? Feelings. This setting also goes back to the metaphor of Plato's cave. It goes like this. A prisoner is chained inside a cave for their entire lives, and he can only see his own shadow from the fire behind him. So he assumes that the shadow is reality, never dreaming that there is a fire just back there, and that beyond that fire, there is a real world outside a cave with sunshine and a big sky, just like the people who live in the Matrix can never imagine a reality greater than the one they currently live in. Neo, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, the scriptures promise everlasting life, but people have never experienced everlasting life, so they think it's a fiction. They think that it is something that is impossible. They think that it's a pipe dream. The scriptures also promise a resurrection for the righteous and the unrighteous. Promises. And yet people can't see that because they've never seen anybody get resurrected before. So they, okay, fine, I believe it, but they don't believe it. The scriptures promise so much that people can't hold on to because why? They have created a reality for themselves and it doesn't fit within their reality. Remember, they're talking about realities here. Fictions upon fictions upon fictions. Your reality may not be the reality. However, here's the problem. Do you know what you don't get to do? And although you think you might have that power, you don't get to create your own reality. You know what that's called? Narcissism! I'm sorry, no it isn't. Yes it is! No it isn't! You don't get to create your own reality because you don't control reality. But that's what movies like this want you to believe, that you have a say-so, that you have a choice. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not about choice. I wish it was about choice. I did say at one point in time that it was about choice, but you'll see even in this movie, they're telling you it's not about choice because every last one of you have already made the choice. That's why there's nothing I can do. 
See, I'm not here to convince you. I will tell you the truth, but there's nothing I can do for you. That's the sad part. That's what I had to learn. I had to learn, it's not that people have already made their choices. That's not what I had to learn. I had to learn that I couldn't save everybody because everybody doesn't want to be saved. Everybody that's in that burning building, they don't want to come out. Some people want to stay asleep because they're having the most wonderful dream and they've never had this dream before. And don't you dare wake them up from this dream. And that's what's going on right now. Remember I told you it stopped raining? Well, it's now pouring again. Okay, hold on. Of course, takes the red pill and eventually passes through the looking glass, where he hatches from his pod just like in Matrix 1, and the first words that he hears are also the same. Welcome, Welcome back to, to the, the real world. world. It is interesting that the analyst also uses a mirror to get Neo to stay, going back to how our phones are mirrors that pull us into their small pocket reality of the internet. Morpheus helps Neo back to the real world by bringing him into the construct and showing him their first encounter on TV. In fact, it's the same TV. He also trains him in a similar dojo. When Neo is coming out of it, Bug says, That's what the Matrix does. It weaponizes every idea, every dream. Because, the studio is the Matrix. It's all about fiction. The only world that matters is the one in here. Then we meet the new crew, including the granddaughter of this guy, Captain Roland. I was impressed that this new crew all made it through the movie, unlike the original crew of the Nebuchadnezzar. Not like this. Now we learn that after the peace was reached at the end of Revelations, there was a machine civil war. Notice we see them fighting with red lasers and blue lasers. Blue being the forces of the analyst who want to create a newer, better matrix. Did you hear him say at the end of Revelation? Was it called Revolution and Reloaded? But he says at the end of Revelations. So I definitely want you guys to pay attention to what they were trying to tell you in this show. This show is not about what you think it's about. It's been about scripture the whole time. From the very beginning, it was about scripture. But most of you knew that when you saw the first two Matrix, Morpheus went to the temple. The temple was held at Zion. His ship was called the Nebuchadnezzar. All scriptural references, people. Please, please, please get what's going on. The only problem is they are telling you the reality because the people who control and operate the status quo, pay attention. That's the problem. That's what's keeping you locked into this system. That's what's keeping you locked into this system. Okay, now, sorry, I've been taking control of a... I have a Windows old folder and my computer is taking control of the Windows old folder and all I can tell you is it's been taking control of the Windows old folder for nine hours now. I am not joking. And it literally is going through every file. I didn't know that Windows old folder was that cluttered with stuff. I don't need it, but I'm going to go through it and find the files that I could use and get rid of everything else I don't. All right, one last thing, and this is going to By be purging it. all of the old programs and starting fresh. And the red lasers represent the good machines who want to live in peace with humans. I love seeing all the sentient machines in the real world, including the magnetic cloud of Morpheus. It's a very cool idea and a great way to expand on this story. Then we enter the new capital of humanity, Io. Lots and lots and lots of symbolism tied to this name. For one thing, so Io looks I like a one and a zero, like the binary, ones and zeros, representing the two binaries here, people and the sentient machines. But going back to Greek mythology, Io was one of the lovers of Zeus, and he turned her into a cow to protect her from his wife, Hera. In the same way, Io is built to stay hidden from the machines. You just got better at hiding from them. Now, in Greek myth, Hera eventually captured Io when she was still a cow and kept her trapped in that form. But being a cow isn't a bad thing. Cows provide milk and they create young. In the same way, Io is built to foster new life. It's a more feminine society led by a woman, Niobe. They try to grow new plants and live in peace, leaving a life of war behind. I could have never made something like this. In Greek mythology, Hera also cursed Io to have a gadfly follow her around, preventing her from resting, just as the humans are being hunted by the machines. In Io, we Hold on. He said that she has a gadfly. Well, there is a creature 
that follows Naomi. They allow that creature to come and she delivers a message to Naomi. So yes, they are following the God thing, the so-called demigogue. And again, scriptural reference. Why? Because the demigods, Greek mythology started after the flood from the time of Nimrod and the Tower of Babel. That's where Greek mythology started. Is just prior to the flood is when all of those demigods were invented, created, existed. Just got to understand and look at what happened during the flood and look at Jude, the verses 1 through 9. Jude, uh, not 1 through 9, 6 through, 6 through 11, sorry. Jude 6 through 11, then you'll find out who the demigods were because they didn't keep their original place. We see people living peacefully among the machines, just like we do with our Alexas. Alexa, shut the f*** up. When Niobe and Neo reunite, they mention Dozer's hooch. Remember that character from Matrix 1? It's a single-celled protein combined with synthetic aminos, vitamins, and minerals. Everything the body needs. And when they re-enter the Matrix, they meet Agent Smith and the Merovingian from Matrix Reloaded. Causality. There is no escape from it. We are forever slaves to it. And this guy hates modern reboots. He likes old classy things that are like books that are European. Films, books, we're all better. Originality mattered. Yeah. Now Smith was also controlled by the analyst because he and Neo are linked. Remember, Revelations ends with Neo letting Smith absorb him, which gives the machines access to his code since Neo allowed himself to be connected to the machine leader as well. And of course this line is a callback to this. I know Kung Fu. Smith and Neo fight in a train station just like in Matrix 1, and he even throws around rabbit punches at Neo. Then the analyst reveals that Trinity and Neo are the combination that makes this new Matrix work. Acids and bases, you're dangerous when mixed together. So, before Neo, there were six other chosen ones who all chose to restart the Matrix to save humanity. But Neo instead chose to rescue Trinity for one reason. Vis-a-vis -vis love. Neo's love for Trinity upset the machine system of control. Then he says, The worse we treat you, the more we manipulate you, the more energy you produce. The worse we treat you, the more we manipulate you, the more energy you produce. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys don't get it, huh? All of the governments of the world, they thrive off of your disunity. Why? Because you're the ones who vote them into power. You're the ones who say, we want you to change things and nothing ever changes. But then you sit back after you did your little uprisings, you sit back and the next thing you do is you do an uprising again and put some new people in and you keep going through the same thing. So the more they manipulate you, the more energy you produce. Which is a metaphor for storytelling, a way to draw money from the audience. And like I said earlier, it's also a metaphor for the way that we engage online with social media. People stay in their pots happier than pigs in shit. In the context of this movie, the analyst feeds off Trinity's sadness and longing because people stay in their pots happier than pigs that are in the mire. Everybody's comfortable in their own little square. Everybody's satisfied. Nobody wants to, they say they want to achieve. They say they want to move forward, but they don't move forward. They don't do anything. Shame, shame, shame. It creates dramatic tension. The humans escape to form a plan with a grown up Sati from Reloaded. That's where the train goes. That's where we're going but you cannot go with us. Smith turns everyone into zombies, which is a way cooler version of him creating an army of himself in the Matrix sequels. And these helicopter shots mirror one another as well. In this last battle, Neo discovers that he can't fly anymore. But as we see later, he and Trinity can fly together. You might be wondering why. Neo could fly in the original Matrix movies because he was a product of that Matrix. He was the remainder, an anomaly that could remake the Matrix as he saw fit. But in this movie, he and Trinity are the basis for this matrix. The key to it all, you and her, quietly yearning for what you don't have. So they later realize that they can remake reality within it however they like. The analyst ends the movie with a speech that perfectly encapsulates the theme of this film. The sheeple, they like my world. They don't want freedom or empowerment. They want to be controlled. They crave Remember, it's all about control. It's all about control. 
from day one, it's always been about control. Ladies and gentlemen, you're being controlled by society, and everybody's acting like they hate control, but that's not the case. Um, that's me bringing the Matrix to you and letting you see that there is some, a lot of stuff in the Matrix that many of you did not know. A lot of stuff in the Matrix that many of you may have forgotten about, and a lot of stuff in the Matrix that you may not have picked up when you watched Resurrection. So I will be watching Resurrection again with this better understanding, and I promise you I'll pick up a whole lot more, but it wasn't until going over this young man's video and having him talk about it that I realized that I want to let you guys know something. Those of you who are in the East Coast and in the uh, midsection of the United States, this particular storm has a lot of rain and a lot of wind. And right now, the wind is rocking this vehicle that I'm in. Okay? And that doesn't happen that often. But it is happening tonight. So this is actually a storm. So I know that this will produce tornadoes for those of you in the coming week. So be prepared for the stories, especially on the 1st. Because this will probably hit the East Coast by the 1st. And if that's the case, y'all are going to have a hard time with this thing, okay? And I know I'm going to have a lot of damage out there that I'm going to have to go clean up tomorrow, okay? Because this is a lot of wind. All right, with that being the case, ladies and gentlemen, y'all take care of yourselves. We'll talk later. Adios. We have the comfort of certainty, and that means you two back in your pods. In the Matrix, the bubbles are their battery cocoons, but for us, it's the lives that we live online. And I love that Trinity thanked the God of Reboots at the end. You gave us something we never thought we could have, another chance. Because even though Reboots often retread the same stories, they do give these actors work. And I don't know if you stayed for the post credit scene, but it basically summarizes what all entertainment is. Cat videos. But give me your thoughts, theories, and questions down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and